In these next few videos, I'm going to show you how we're going to finish our painted portraits. We've been working uh, so far with some photos of ourselves and then some cellophane and also canvas board. This idea was inspired by Miss Amsler's art room blog and I just want us to continue. So we left off where we had like a base coat for our canvas. We've been talking about analogous colors. So here I've got my palette and I've got like a blue green here, a deep blue. And I'm just gonna be working with those colors just to add a little bit more layered, textured layers to my background. So this canvas is going to serve as a background for our portrait. So I'm gonna, and you can do however you, you can decide however you want to do this, but I like to have the edges a little deeper colors. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. As you can see, I've, I have some textures there that are we can kind of see through a little bit. I don't want to cover up what I already have. I just want to add to it, just kind of deepen it a little bit, make it a little bit more interesting. I always love a layered effect. You can even see what those two colors bring you. I'm even going to add a little bit of an off-white. So we're using analogous colors that those are colors that are near each other or neighboring each other on the color wheel. So they work harmoniously together. I think that's about all I want to do to my canvas board. Now we're going to be working on our actual portrait. As you can see, I traced and simplified a lot of what was going on. I just really want simplified lines here, okay? And I did get some blue on my acetate. You want to be careful. So we, we did not have acetate, we had cellophane. So we're gonna use what we have. And the first thing I wanna do is I want to cut out the edges, but I wanna make sure that I cut off this black line because I don't want that black line to show once I lay it over my canvas board. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So now we're gonna start painting our portrait. We're not gonna paint it entirely because we want some of the areas to be see-through. Um, now our canvas has blues and greens and teals, so I'm going to want to find something to contrast with those colors. So I'm going to be thinking about, these are all cool colors, and I'm going to be thinking about warm colors for my portrait. Now, we are going to be painting on the back side of this. So if you if you traced this here and your marker here is on top, this is the front, you're going to flip it over and paint from the back. So it's kind of a reverse painting so that your black lines do not get disturbed at all. But you're going to have to be thinking about whatever colors you lay down first are what are going to show up, all right? So I've got here in my palette some warm colors. Anything ha that has red or yellow or orange, I'm going to want to 
um, use. I also have this, it's kind of like a white, it's called unbleached titanium. It's sort of like a white, but it's a bit of a warmer white. Now you're going to be thinking about the different areas and how you're going to paint. Again, you're not going to want to cover everything. And you can definitely do a little color mixing. So I guess I'm going to start a little bit with the face because that's usually what people want to work on first. I can go over my lines a little bit because those are not going to get covered on the other side. And again, we're just putting a little bit of color here and there. We don't want a lot of color on the face. We want some of that background to show. And I've left the eyes clear, so I'm going to add a little color to that. While it's wet, I can even, I think I covered up my little glare there. I can lift some of that up. All right. If the paint is really um, translucent, if the paint is really see-through, you can sort of cake it on there a little bit so that it can be a full pigmentation of color. So now that everything is dry, um, you should actually let your paint dry overnight. So don't be in a rush to put these two together. It should not be tacky, so when you touch it, it should be completely dry, nothing sticky. And that goes for both of these, okay? So you make sure everything is nice and dry. And here's how it looks over top. Now you can decide how you want it. You can flip this around and see if you like that better. And I actually happen to like this better. And so what I have available, sorry about that, but I found in Dollar General of all places this tape runner and it's double-sided tape and it really adheres well and it's Pretty much invisible so what we're going to do since this is canvas board we need to attach this um, together so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to run some of this tape on the four corners and I know you can't see it I'm gonna put a little bit in the center but if you hear like that little rotary sound a little spinning thing that means that it's going on there and you can sort of feel the tackiness and then you want to lay it down don't press until you're ready and this is where it's important for you not to have those sharpie lines on the edges because you don't want to see that when you cut out your plastic you wanted to make sure that you cut out that that sharpie edge and there you have it and now this should stay nice and put and we're able to move it around without it falling out you should have your name on the back and you are done